Right, so the US are not only stymieing any chance or hope of a ceasefire being reached in Israel and Gaza, despite Article 99 being triggered by the UN Secretary General and the Uniting for Peace resolution also having been passed by the United Nations, but now they're trying to woo the Swiss to not apply the Geneva Conventions to Israel, despite the mass death and destruction they have been inflicting on Gaza for the last nearly 11 weeks. The very legislation that governs the rules of war, in effect, that bans inhumane treatment of people and the US has literally sent in diplomats to get Israel off the hook for what they've done. This is utterly depraved, of course, but tells me that the Biden administration is screamingly alarmed at this point that they really are complicit in war crimes themselves. And rather than stop, they're going to try and get Israel yet another exemption to get themselves off the hook. And yet another example of being treated differently than every other nation on earth is being applied to Israel in the process. Anyone who is appalled at what is happening must call this out for what it is. The US going into damage limitation mode whilst allowing Israel to just keep on carrying on. Right, so the Geneva Conventions, in existence in their modern form since the 12th of August 1949, and so-called because Geneva is where they were signed, and as such, Switzerland is the custodians of said conventions. The rule book, if you like, governing conduct during times of war, to states that have signed up to them, of course, or the relevant parts of them, which includes both Israel and Palestine. Who better to look after such ma matters and administer to this issue than the famously neutral Switzerland? There are four conventions, which is why it's called conventions, plural, which all signatories must abide by, though some nations haven't necessarily signed up to all four. However, in the case of Israel and Palestine, they have. And these are the first Geneva Convention for the amelioration of the condition of the wounded and sick in armed forces in the field, first adopted in 1864, revised 1906, 1929, finally 1949. The second Geneva Convention for the amelioration of the condition of wounded, sick and shipwrecked members of armed forces at sea, first adopted in 1949. The third Geneva Convention relative to the treatment of prisoners of war, first adopted in 1929, last revision 1949. And the fourth Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in times of war, first adopted in 1949, based on parts of the Hague Convention previously. It is Convention's Three and four that are most relevant here, though. The first one I would have thought comes into play as well. The attacks on ambulances, for example, and the blocking of aid to wounded Palestinians almost certainly include members of Hamas. But it's those latter two conventions that warrant paying the most attention to because they will be the most clear cut. Hostage releases from Israeli detention, for example. There was that kid on social media, the video footage we'd seen, who had had his arm broken whilst in detention. There are the clear signs of mistreatment in others, people who have wasted away, lost vast amounts of weight. There are the horrifying stories of what it is like, particularly for women in detention, kept in cold conditions as well. We've heard and seen numerous images and footage of these releases and what people have said upon being released as part of the hostage swap. All would appear to be direct violations of that third convention. The fourth convention, though, well, how many examples do you need exactly? The excessive deaths of civilians, 24,000 people dead, of which 10,000 are children, and rising. The targeting of civilian infrastructure, from hospitals to schools to refugee camps to places of worship. Two dead Christians shot whilst heading to the loo by snipers within the grounds of a church. Babies in incubators, the IDF forced medics to leave behind to die and decompose where they lay. The indiscriminate bombing, the use of white phosphorus, the attacks on medical convoys from the Red Cross to the Red Crescent to Medicine Sans Frontières, the deliberate targeting of the press, almost a hundred journalists dead. Recently an Al Jazeera cameraman, Samar Abu Dhaka, died after being shot because the IDF prevented medical help from reaching them. All of these and so many more examples that have been covered, even by mainstream sources, would seem obvious breaches of the Geneva Conventions. Palestine certainly thinks so, and they are expected to imminently put their case to Swiss officials, for whom, as gatekeepers of the conventions, it is up to them to call a conference to discuss such potential violations of said conventions. But having got wind of this, though, the US are set to try and block this from happening as well. It's not enough they've been blocking the UN Security Council repeatedly from calling a ceasefire. They've been dragging their heels for days, quibbling over terminology in the latest attempt to just get some more humanitarian aid into Gaza, because even that is considered a little bit too anti-Israel for them, despite people in Gaza literally dying of hunger and thirst now. But in response to this apparent move by Palestine to seek a conference on Israeli breaches of the rules of war, the Geneva Conventions, 
The US are now attempting to even block that. And this sets a massively dangerous precedent. The Biden administration, Genocide Joe, literally being prepared to render the Geneva Convention secondary to Israel, being allowed to do as it pleases. And you can't help but think that that's got a lot to do with them facing calls and accusations of being complicit in what they're doing by enabling them and by arming them. We're witnessing some of the worst wartime atrocities in living memory. And the US want to stop Israel being held to account for it in no small part to cover their own backsides. Again, Israel being exempted from being held to account. No other country gets this, and yet the US are almost single-handedly able to do this by virtue of their position of being a permanent member of the Security Council, and now seeking to use diplomatic pressure on the Swiss to kill off any notion of being held to conventions Israel are signatories of. One of the big reasons the US think they can get this is because the UN hasn't passed a resolution to go to the Swiss themselves, that this is just Palestine potentially on their own doing so, as if that really should make a difference. Huffington Post, who have highlighted this story, have said, U.S. diplomats are finalizing a démarche, a diplomatic initiative to their Swiss counterparts that Washington hopes will scuttle plans for a meeting to discuss violations of the Geneva Conventions in the current war between Israel and Hamas, the Gaza-based militant group according to State Department documents seen by HuffPost. The revelation comes as the U.S. is simultaneously slow-rolling the most high-profile international attempt to ease suffering in Gaza, a United Nations Security Council resolution that would drastically increase the flow of humanitarian aid into the besieged strip. Palestinian diplomats and a significant group of U.N. member states, including some European nations allied with the U.S., are preparing a call for Switzerland to launch such a conference focusing on the fighting on Israel-Palestine that would cover Geneva Convention's violations by all parties, according to the State Department documents and a person familiar with the Palestinian effort. But Palestine had been here before, though, though certainly I would argue never before has the treatment of Palestinians and the conduct of Israel in Gaza ever been thrust into the spotlight by social media as it has been now. For one, it, social media wasn't around very much for the last few times Geneva Convention conferences were convened. The last three times Geneva Convention conferences uh, were brought were in 1999, 2001 and 2014 and all were concerning the Israel-Palestine conflict. This time's different though. This time the US know the picture is much more exposed hence they're preempting the Palestinians who are being supported in their imminent draft to Switzerland by Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch and the International Commission for Jurists. Their words should carry more weight than shameless representatives of Genocide Joe. But we'll have to see if the US managed to screw up ending this conflict again with their interference in this. Palestine's timing might not be the worst, though, as Israel could do with another ceasefire. They are looking for one, in fact, though you might not have heard much about that. It's a good job some of us are talking about such things, though, as you can see on this video here, which you've been intrigued by that. You should definitely watch next, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.